All right, continuing on from when we from whence we last left off. Uh, so now what I need to do is basically actually sculpt my model. So we have a good base geometry. Well, well, you know that's a loose thing to say, but we're going to say it's good. So now um, underneath geometry, still uh, we're just going to go and we're just going to divide it, just like we did in ZBrush. We just keep subdividing. So if I hit divide, you're going to see now I have level two and level one and then i can hit divide again and you can have multiple division division levels and that's basically what we're gonna do so for now on like this gm2 whatever it is at this point this is what our guy is okay so um uh basically i'm just gonna hit b s t for my regular brush uh and uh from here what i would tell you to do is oops b s t sorry i didn't mean to do that I meant that space bar um I would just go through and make sure it looks good. So you can see the ear didn't turn out very well, and this nose needs to be more, so that's a little bit better. Uh, I need more of an upper lip. So I'm just going to use, you know, I'm at my lowest level still. I didn't really actually do anything with it yet. Uh, but, you know, I would just kind of sculpt and, you know, just try to fix up anything, uh, make it look a little bit nicer, that sort of thing. You get the idea, right? Um, then you would just go up level, and let's go up two levels. Um, and I'm going to shift F because I don't really need the um, thing there. And I'll just make this smaller. And then I can just start really, you know, sculpting in the details and stuff like that a little bit more. Maybe put a, a filter room in here. Um, that's your snot aqueduct. For those not in the know. Uh, kind of pop that in. You know, we can kind of go like this and make some eyelids maybe. All right. You get the idea. Imagine, imagine this looks good, if you will. And we'll just go ahead and actually let's make let's take the focal shift a little tighter. I'm just gonna make sure I kind of cut this nose here in, and see if we can get this thing looking a little bit better. We'll shift to smooth. Um, God, that looks terrible. Okay. And uh, you know, go up like that, and then you know, work your way up the levels. Uh, so I'm going to divide again, and we are currently up to 1.1 million. Let's see. Oh, that's not going to help as much. Anyway, uh, let's do, well, yeah. So let's just say, like, here, I would just go through and, let's put this back. you know, you could start adding, um, you know, like, wrinkles and things like that, right? So I would just say I wanted to. Add some shirt wrinkles, and you know you basically would model all your stuff, right? Um, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna do let's do another level up, but uh, you're gonna want to spend more time on it. I'm just trying to cover as best I can. Okay. So at this point, let's say I just want to do texture. I want to add some like textural components, you know, um, really small, minute detail. So if you go up to a higher level, I could do that. Um, but what I can also do is use my alphas here. Oops. And you can see there's all sorts of these alphas. And I can use different ones to do different things. So um, I like this one a lot because I use this to do like um, creases and things. So uh, let's see if I take that and then I'm just going to make this a little bit small. Take the intensity down a whole bunch. Leave that like that. I'm going to hold Alt and then hopefully you can see it. But let's keep the intensity up just a little just so you can see it better. Um, but this will add like... You know, maybe I want to give them like more of a weathered look, right? So just trying to, you can add these kind of details by playing around with um, these alphas like so. And you can import your own too. So we can kind of see like, so this one actually for hair actually works really well. So let's say I want to do that one. Let's back this thing up. Let's make this a little bigger and take the focal shift this direction. Yeah, actually, make that bigger um oops. I guess take that take that intensity down actually um you know you can use this for like hair right but there's different basically alphas here that you can play around that might be useful to you you know maybe you want this like weird looking skin kind of thing right uh all sorts of stuff you can do you can switch this to oops to drag dot for instance so this one actually might work so you can click and then drag and then you let go and then click and drag and let go click and drag and you can basically kind of place them okay so 
It's got great looking skin. Uh, but there's a bunch of them here, and like I said, you can import more if you would like. Um, another thing you can do is use the... Um, I'd probably try to use a lot of that if you could help it. Let me switch this back to freehand. It was on dots, but it's the same thing. Um, uh, but I would probably maybe use the spotlight, which we're going to use for the painting as well, but we'll just do it here so you can see how it works. But uh, So if I go to um, texture, and then um, I want to uh, load the spotlight, and I would find a picture of um, something that's got texture in it. So let's do this. Was, uh, oops, sorry, not load spotlight. I need to import. Why did import? Uh, where are you? No, that wasn't it. Uh, well, so I'll just grab, let's say this. I'll say this one. Okay. So now that will be loaded. Ugh. So uh, import, load your picture. It'll show up there. So you click on it. So that's what's loaded. And you can see it's loaded over there now. And then what you want to do is, um, where are you? Add to spotlight. Click on that and the spotlight will automatically pop up. Now, once you have the spotlight, it's Z to turn on that little controller. And if I just click, it's going to put the controller wherever. If I click and drag, it moves the whole image. Um, to get rid of the spotlight is Shift and Z, okay? Like Z when I say Z. So Z just turns it on and off. Shift Z turns the whole thing on and off, okay? So let's say, I don't know, I wanted to be like a furry guy, and I'm just going to use this grass texture, okay? So let Shift Z to bring it up, let Z to bring this up, and then I can use this. If you hover over these, it'll tell you what they are, but I'm going to use this to scale it down so it's a little bit smaller. And then just so I can see through it a little bit better, I'm going to go to Opacity, and I'm going to make it pretty transparent. We'll just go all the way. And now when I go, oh, and then I'll hit Z to turn that part, sorry. Yeah, just turn that part off. And uh, I'm going to turn my alpha back to off so that I don't using that when I'm doing this. And let's do draw size. And now when I go to paint, it's actually using that image, and he looks really gross, right? That's really great. <laughs> uh, let's maybe lower the strength a little bit. Um, but I can use that image as a way of doing what I want. So then I'll just hit um, Z, put that in here, click and drag. Um, oh, and I'll hit Z so I can move the model. And then you can just, you know, paint it. But you just got to be aware of the edges, because if I go like this, you can see it's going to make that line. So, And then you can just load more stuff into that, too. So, uh, again, texture, and then you can uh, import, import more stuff, and then you can select them here. So if I click on this one, or let's say this one, I click on this one, and then I can click Add to Spotlight. And then there it is, and now I'm using this picture instead. So, um, And I can click on this one. And use this one. So you can actually have multiple ones, just so you are aware. So you load multiple ones in. But I'm gonna click on this one, scale this guy down, and let's just put this. Oh, keep forgetting to pull this up. We'll just put this on his leg here, so you can see it, right? No, so Shift Z. So it's Z and Shift Z. So just try different combinations of that, because I know, you know, you might forget. So. Uh, there you go. So if I wanted like sculpt textures and stuff, that's one way of doing it. You can add and apply things that way. Uh, so you just try to get as high res as you can. Hopefully it looks good. And you're like, yay, happy birthday me. And that's great. Okay. So let's say you went through and you sculpt everything. And it looks real nice. And you put all the details in and you add all that stuff in there. Okay. There are a bunch of other brushes. You feel free to try these other ones. Um, some of them are very specific for very specific uses. Like you see, there's ones for like groom. That's just if you're doing hair. And we didn't, I didn't discuss um, fiber mesh at all, uh, but that's like a different thing altogether. Okay. But there's other stuff in here too. So some of them won't work, but there are some neat ones in there. Some of them only work with um, Dynamesh. So if you see some that say they work with Dynamesh, try them out. It might be neat. Okay. So uh, let's say we sculpt it. I'm like, yay. Uh, now I want to paint it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to, uh, Make sure you change your material, so make it blend so that it's just generic, okay? And then what you want to do is find whatever you want your default color to be. So I have this guy here. I'm going to make him, um, I don't know, this weird green color. Where I say? This makes me feel good. Okay, so find the color you want. Get that like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to color. Oh, before I even do that, we want to switch out. So now we're no longer sculpting. This is the end of sculpting. So make sure the sculpt's all good and you're happy and you know. You're going to turn that off. And then you're going to do MRGB right there so that means material and then red green blue okay make sure that's on 
then you're going to go to color and then you're going to click on fill object. Now you're going to notice that when I switch this color around, notice that it doesn't change him anymore because now that's actually stuck onto the guy. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do RGB because now I'm no longer going to change the material. I'm not going to paint materials. I'm just going to paint the color information. But if for some reason you wanted to, I could go like this and be like, I want my guy to have, um, what is this? Uh, I want him to have this material because he's going to have shiny arms because he's like that. Uh, I can go ahead and make him, you know, like the Winter Soldier, but twice over. Okay. So if you, um, you can see he's got two distinctly different materials, but you are going to notice that the edge is going to be not great. Okay. Um, so, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and just do RGB. I don't want MRGB because I'm just going to say, oh, I'm only painting um, that information at this point. Okay. So just switch that back to RGB. Again, make sure these are all off. You want just this guy and you're good to go. All right. Now it's just the same rules as we applied to before. Um, you just have the standard here and so on and so forth. So what I did before when we were doing this is I had what I called rainbow puke and I just painted the whole thing like one color. Um, so you can go to this and then you go to um, color spray and then you choose the color you like. So I'm just going to do that weird green again. Um, and then when I paint it, you're going to see it's got all these variations. If I make this smaller, the droplets will be smaller. Um, and this is good because it gives you a good, oh crap, I keep hitting B. Escape. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Um, I mean to hit a uh, space bar. Um, and then, you know, you paint the whole thing like this just to get a nice undertone of uh, color variation. Now you can adjust it. If you find it's doing too much or too little, um, go to the color intensity variance and just lower it. Okay. Uh, or go higher if you want to be really crazy. Okay. Once that's done, um, you can go ahead and I believe regular spray doesn't do the variation. Okay. It's not doing, it's not doing a color variation. It's doing a black and white variation, which I don't really want to do. So I'm just going to go back to regular freehand. And then I usually just, you know, uh, I'll make this really, really light. So I'll take the RGB intensity, which is actually right here as well. And I'll just go like this and I'll just kind of brush over it. Um, the actual color that I want. Right. So I'll go like this. Ooh, yeah. But there's a little bit of variation underneath that if you look closely, you can see it because it's not just a solid color. The solid color just looks very fake and plastic and, and not very interesting. Um, by doing a little rainbow puke underneath, it gives it more variation and looks a little bit nicer. Okay, that's great. Um, then from there, uh, you probably want to start painting, you know, your other colors and such, right? So uh, let's say he's going to wear pink boots. So I go like pink and like this and I would paint, maybe take the intensity back up. Okay, and I paint his poons, his poons, his boots, pink, um, so on and so forth, right? So now he's got great looking boots. Goes well with the green, I think. All right. So now he's got these boots going on, um, and so on and so forth, right? And so you would just, you know, maybe do kind of a young, uh, yellow or creamy color. Oh, so another thing I like to do too is what I call pre-shading. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll paint in areas for lightness and paint in areas for darkness. Now we can do that through masking, uh, the masking down here. But, uh, if you remember when we were doing in class, it did not work that well. So I'm actually going to avoid that. Um, but it is useful, uh, if you want to do some things. Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you the one. So I'm going to do cavity because ambient occlusion is good if you're trying to get a general, like, lightness and darkness, like things in shadow. Uh, if you're trying to get texture, mass by cavity is really good. So I'm going to click on mass by cavity and I'm going to hit mass by cavity. Um, and you can see it's going to pick up on details really well. When ambient occlusion does general areas of lightness and darkness, okay? So, um, I actually want to paint in, oh god, come on man. Alright, I actually want to paint in where it's dark, I actually want to paint that in, um, with a darker green color, right? Like, let's say like this, and I'll take the RGB intensity down a whole bunch, okay? It's like a darkish kind of green, made that darker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and click, which will invert my mask. Now when I go to paint in there, it'll only paint in those areas. So if I go like this, and then if I hold, um, so I just painted in there that color, I'm gonna hold control, click and drag to click to get rid of the mask. And you'll see it painted in all those gaps. Um, ugh, 
trying to hold shift to make it smooth, like blur a little bit, but it was a little too much. But that's a really good way of like picking up texture is this mask by cavity. And you can change the intensity and the blur amount uh, right here. That's up to you. Uh, mask by, by ambient occlusion is better for doing dark areas. So this will do, if you have that on, it'll allow you to like, like I can paint underneath the neck here because that would be in shadow, right? And um, underneath the nose and inside these eyes. Right, so I'm just gonna manually do this, uh, but I just call this like the pre-shading. So the first thing we did was kind of variance, um, or actually first thing we did was primary colors. Um, but then after that, I usually will do this pre-shading kind of thing, where I just basically try to embellish features and such uh, to make it look a little bit better. So like for instance, like uh, contouring, right? They do the thing where they paint here to make the cheekbones stick out more. We do the same thing, we're contouring. Um, this area there so and then I'll do the opposite I'll do light areas I'll do a lighter warmer color for lighter areas so I'll just kind of so like that and oops not that one and then you know I'm doing a terrible job but I think you get hopefully you get the idea the intensity right so I'll draw lighter areas and uh, kind of texture it up like that and then I can do the same thing that we did earlier where if I want to paint something onto him using Again, an image, uh, which I might do even before this pre shading. You probably want to do it before the pre shading. Um, I will go uh, to texture, you know, import, find a picture you want to, to import. So let's see if I have anything worthy here. Uh, let's do this one, I guess. Um, and then we'll pick a C. I'll hit Z and then, oh, did I not? Oh, hang on a second. There it is. I got to click on it. Sorry, it wasn't added to it. And then let's see the opacity up because I can't even see what we're doing here. There's opacity. Uh, background opacity. Okay. Still on the wood. So I'm going to go to texture. Click on this guy. Why are you not on there? And where's the add to? Add to spot. Oh, there it is. Okay, so then we'll add it to it. So now we're going to grab this one. And then I can just uh, scale this down. And then um, you can paint through it. So then I'll hit Z again. And I'll just go blah, 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 blah. Right? Like so. And then I'll hit Shift Z to turn it off. And then he's got this awesome tattoo of a cone riding Jason. It's pretty great. Okay? So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, and that's how you would generally paint them. Okay. So uh, uh, just be aware too, I should have said this in the beginning, I forgot. You have to be up a certain amount of geometry. If your geometry is lower, it's going to look pixelated. See how terrible this looks? Because it's the same thing as having pixels. The lower number, what we're painting are polys, not actual image, not an actual image. If I go low enough, you can see it's just going to be totally pixelated. But the higher you go, the higher resolution. So even if you're trying to keep, like, look at, like mostly he's pretty simple. Even if you're trying to keep a simple character, you still have to subdivide it just to paint because without that, you won't have the detail necessary to paint it. Okay? So once you're done with that and you're happy, all you're going to do is just do File, Save As, Save Your Dude. And then you can just give me, it's a ZPR. You can just give me that. Now, if you wanted to export it uh, to bring it to Maya or what have you, um, you're going to wait for this thing to stop doing this someday. And then you're just going to go to Z plugin. Um, you don't have to do this for me, but you can go to Z plugin, multi map exporter. And then what you do is you choose textures, what we want. And we also want normal. And we also want to export off the mesh. That way it'll do all three of these things. And then um, for the map size, 2048 is probably good. Uh, then you go to the export options and then it'll give you the options for each one of them. So the normal map, you can do, okay, subdivision level one. So it's going to do it one tangent S normal. So that's fine. Um, for the mesh export, uh, we want to do subdivision level one. So if I wanted to go up to a higher level, like right now I'm on level five, I put level five, but then I have to change my normal map. And honestly, mine wouldn't be able to handle it anyway. So, uh, subdivision level one is probably fine. Uh, you do that and then you just hit create all maps and then it's going to export out an OBJ and I don't remember what they are. I think they're TIFFs or something by default. Um, where are they? 
Export options, file names. Where are you? Ooh, maybe it's file names? Yeah, file names. Uh, and then you can do some adjustment here. Okay, and that would be it. Then this character would be done, and you can um, uh, just submit uh, him or her, whatever you made. Hopefully it doesn't look as terrible as mine. Uh, but in order to make it look good, it would just take me a lot of time, and I just really want to try and get through the thing so you guys get the ideas. If you do get stuck or you need something, let me know. Hopefully this will get you through it. All right, good luck, guys.